this time, I'm going to introduce uh, our Vice President, Mr. Judson Hunter, and then he will be introducing our guest speaker for the day. All right, our uh, guest speaker for today is going to be Jody Fleener. Uh, Jody is a Wisconsin native who moved to Kentucky in 1987. Um, she's raised two boys here and started her professional career with Together We Care. Uh, she was there for 13 years and then her next position is with Ohio County Tourism. Uh, she volunteers her time on the Relay for Life Committee. She's, this will be her 16th year and uh, she's glad to be called in Ohio County. So I'm happy to introduce uh, Jody with Ohio County Children. I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to come and speak to you. Um, I am from Ohio County Tourism, and as Paul just said, he introduced Joe Beth from a Beaver Dam Tourism. Ohio County Tourism. So in my bio, they said that I took this position three years, about three years ago. So the first thing I thought about, what does this really mean? What did I really take? Okay, so I thought, tourism. Okay, bringing, seeing people, having a good time. People like to be tourists, right? We all, at one point or another, have been a tourist. So what did this mean? So we're gonna do a quick, brief, 101, tourism 101. New slide, what is a tourism? <laughs> a tourism is marketing the pleasurable enjoyment of a traveler. What is a traveler? A tourism. It's like going, oh, a tourist. A tourist is someone that travels from about 50 miles away from home. So a tourist has to be someone that comes in from 50 miles away from home. That is the Kentucky tourism industry definition. Oh, there's my welcome. <laughs> There we go. See? It's tourists. That's it. Yeah, thank you. Sorry about that. That's it. We got it. Great. And tourism always flies with senior fans. <laughs> so, okay, we'll try it now. So, so um, that? there we go. So, from the Lane Report, and being the chamber, you all get the lane report at one time or another. Last year, on two, in April 2016, I think Chase brought this to my attention, that the cover said, tourism becoming an economic driver. So why is tourism important? If I had to ask you, would I be able to hang you if I said, if we played hangman, and it said, what are the top three industries that are the economic impact for our state? I don't know if I'd be able to hang you or not. But the answer is, what, anybody got any ideas what maybe one of the top three are for the top industries? Coal, I heard coal. Anything? Excuse me? Horses, horses that was a consideration. Uh-huh, horses. Automotive. Automotive. And of course, tourism. And okay, and it's kind of a sneak question. Okay, why am I doing that? Oh well, it's a sneak question. I get to hang you because, but Paul cheated because <laughs> the tourism does sneak in there, and it sneaks in as number two. So there's actually we got to think when we say coal, agriculture, and automotive is number one. Tourism sneaks in as number two, and this was a big surprise to, to most everyone when this is thought of because you don't think of it as being that big of an economic impact. You really think of it as people just going around, having a good time, seeing things coming in and out of somebody's place to, to visit, seeing attractions. So what happens is, this is why. Because the Lane Report uses these statistics. <coughs> Automotive, for the 2015 data, 14.3 billion. Tourism, 13.7 billion for the state. Agriculture, down to 6.5, and coal, that really surprised me, for their 2014 data, was 4.96 billion. Those figures on the bottom come from the Kentucky state. This, was, this number of 13.7 was up 7 million from 2014. So as tourism people, 
and things happen in the state, keep encouraging more and more people to come in into our state, the numbers keep going up. A sideline of this is, right now, the um, state has offered the movie industry, Kentucky has the best incentives for the movie industry by far across the United States. And Atlanta is becoming the new Hollywood, but Kentucky is up there in the running for where people want to come in and make, produc make productions. So I want you to be looking at my Facebook and looking at our website and seeing those shares. You might have caught the one I really pushed for, and I could not believe I could not find this. They wanted a vacant barn that was growing up with a field within a, a vicinity where they could dig a 10-foot hole for a pit. They said, it's a scary movie. We want a wedding dress to be able to be caught on the brush. I couldn't find that. I couldn't believe I couldn't find that in our area. But I couldn't. I looked at a ton of barns. And one problem I had is I would say I was coming out and look at people were mowing their yard so I could come and see it. And I was like, don't get it ready. They want it just like that. So, um, but because of these incentives, and that's, that's really not a tourist related thing, but it is because if we could land a movie for our Ohio County, they do awesome things. One of our counties landed a movie and they came in and when they looked at downtown, they were like, do you care if we renovate these three buildings because we want to use them in the scenes? And I'm sure Paul would say, oh no, don't, you know, don't renovate my downtown. I don't want that to happen. So they came in and they just renovated all these things. They opened a coffee shop that was going to be used in the movie. So when they left, the city said, can we just keep the coffee shop running? And they said, one condition. It has to remain as it was in the movie with the name. You think that's not going to be a number one tourist attraction when that movie hits? You know, so things like that are in the works and happening. And these will bring tourists into our county. I really want to land one of those. So I keep watching those movie hits and we'll get one sooner or later. Whoop. How do I go back? Okay, so let's talk just Ohio County. The ge this generated in total tourist spending in Ohio County over 11 million. It produced over 2 million worker income. It created 153,000 plus in local taxes. It created a million in state revenue. It supported 155 jobs because of the tourism industry. And it generated over $7,000 daily in worker paychecks. Now when I present to the fiscal court, it's tough because they are watching your money. They're watching your tax money. They're doing the best they can with the money and working to help your county. So when I come in and I say, I want money for tourism, I know that when they look at me, I'm asking, give me out of your budget. And that's tough because I can't tell them that I'm gonna give that money back and put it back into their budget. And they have to watch their budget. <coughs> so it's tough when I present these, money, these numbers. I know they see it. But when I presented this last time, and the next figure, when I presented this, they did notice. Oh, there it is. In 2015, each of the 8,573 households in Ohio County paid $139 less in local and state taxes because of what tourism brought in. So that means each one of you did not pay from your house $139 because we have tourists coming in. Those guys from Florida, from Arizona, from actually we had 22 visitors from uh, foreign countries come to the home place. Those are the guys that paid that $139 for you. So thank you. Thank you to them. They paid it instead of you. Not very good at this. <sighs> Why do they come? They come for our heritage, Bill Monroe. They come for our heritage, they come for the bluegrass music, and they come for the events and festivals that we're having. 
The Beaver Dam Amphitheater is starting to really move, really pull in some names, really starting to make happenings. I'm getting calls because I'm Ohio County and they're Beaver Dam. We both get calls and I'm getting calls asking what's coming to the amphitheater. And I have a strawberry down there because next year the state is going to be promoting culinary. There's going to be a big push for what's culinary in, in, in Kentucky. Across the state we had to pick up what is going to be your culinary special. Our area is going to be barbecue. Wow, surprise, surprise. So our barbecue plate is going to be barbecued mutton, coleslaw, baked beans, and um, I forgot our dessert. Oh, french fries. And then in honor, when we were at the state meeting, in honor of Beaver Dam Strawberry Festival, which is getting known around the state, they picked strawberry lemonade. So the words out there, how these things are growing and how the popularity is spreading. And this year, to give our children in Beaver Dam and in the surrounding areas that don't get to be that 50 mile out of here tourists, I heard sharks are coming to our strawberry festival. Now can you imagine how many happy kids are going to be that are going to be able to see a shark in Beaver Dam? That's awesome that they're going to be able to see that. So that's your local events. So what tourism is, is I'm mentioning Beaver Dam because Ohio County tourism and Beaver Dam tourism are separate but we work together. Ohio County Tourism markets all of Ohio County, including Beaver Dam. I assist in planning for events. I focus on the bringing the visitors. I gotta bring them in from out of here. I gotta bring tourists in from out of the state. I just ran an ad today that's going in a um, brochure that's going to foreign countries for hitting tour buses. Um, I manage the WK when it reopens. P.S. Where it is, it'll probably reopen in July. Overseeing the Bill Monroe Museum is a project taken on by the Ohio County Tourism, and I am funded by a 3% occupancy tax from our hotels. I am overseen by a board of directors. Beaver Dam Tourism markets events in Beaver Dam. They plan and they sponsor their events. They concentrate on the bring-in. When they do something at the amphitheater, they want everybody to come and enjoy that because those people are going to come in and spend, buy gas, hopefully eat dinner, hopefully go shopping, hopefully do some stuff, and they are able to sponsor those events. And they bring those in, and they also concentrate on doing things for local, the local guests. So they, are, they financially assist other events and attractions in Ohio County. Ohio County. They do the amphitheater, the park, the farmer's market, the events in downtown, and they do the ball fields. They are funded with the restaurant tax, and they are also governed by a board of directors. So for tourism, we are considered a one-day trip, Beaver Dam is. And my goal is to turn Ohio County into a weekend visit. Pete, there's a brochure on your table about the scenes and sounds of Rosine. When we go, there's also a brochure on there for the Bill Monroe Museum. Groundbreaking will happen on May 22nd. Hopefully when the museum opens, this will be our uh, weekend goal. But the amphitheater brings people in. If there's a big event going on on Friday, we hope that they stay over Friday night and they go shopping on Saturday, do some more things with us. I don't know if anybody's aware of the Cowboy Fast Draw State Tech Championship that's in here. These events that I have listed here, besides the salts and sightings and salts, fill our motels. They are to capacity, and they're filling the state, uh, the counties around us. The Fast Draw brings in, last year he hosted 18 states came in for that. 80 shooters came in here. It's held out here at the park, and they came in from 17 to 18 different states. He had 80. They got an award for being the best club in the nation. Uh, James Castile is the president of that, and he has done an awesome job. The Rosine Barn, last year they were picked as one of the best 52 places in the world to visit by the New York Times, and when I would go out there on a Friday night and sit, I was sitting next to people that were like from Sweden and all over. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I'd say, oh, how, could, how are you here from Sweden? Yes, we came to the barn. We read it in the New York Times. I'm like, really? So to us, it's a diamond in the rough. I mean, you know, if we were listed, I think Sydney, Australia was above us and the Galapagos Islands were below us. And I was like, hmm, my husband said, pick one. Where do you want to go? I'm not sure I would have said Rosine, i got to be honest. <laughs> but when you're a bluegrass lover and you want to see it, it was awesome and people came. The beagle runs that they hold out here are also filling our motels and the surrounding motels around us. Mitzi's Shoes brings people in for shopping. And then, and I think, Mary, I think you can validate that. They come and buy shoes and then come strolling down the streets. They come in to buy things. And I, it's not happening so much anymore, but I was getting calls for Main Street Marketplace for a long time that people wanted to see that. I mentioned the Bill Monroe uh, Home Place. Last year, 1,317 visitors. 729 of those are for Kentucky. And I will admit, less than 1% is from Ohio County. 563 are from outside of Kentucky, and 22 are foreign visitors. I mentioned the Rosine Barn being on the uh, New York Times list. They stated that last year's revenue, and they get their revenue by passing the hat once a night, they remarked that last year's revenue was eight times bigger than any revenue they had ever had in one season. It was an awesome year for them. So the tourist dollar, it's remarked that for every dollar I spend, or Paul spends in marketing, $16 comes back. So I looked at this and I was like, okay, we're not gonna go through this big because this is the chamber, you're all businessmen. But when you look at that dollar, if we take like Little Stevie's, your restaurant of the year, we take the restaurant, right away it shoots off to the management, and then we take the waitress's tips, what she does with her money. She buys gas, she gets rent, she goes shopping. That tour, you can see where that tourism dollar goes. When I thought of this at first, I thought, oh, there's so many bankers out there. How does a banker get affected? But then I thought, you know what? A banker gets affected by every one of those things because sooner or later, that money ends up in the bank. <laughs> so that tourism dollar hits us all. The Bill Monroe Home Place. This, these are the projects that we have to keep doing and have to keep working on to bring more and more people in. I have to take a focus group here because I've gotten some feedback and I'm questioning it. I'm going to run my own little focus group. Focus group is, how many of you have heard that Ohio County is building a Bill Monroe, oh, besides this presentation right now, either on Facebook or on a web page or in the newspaper, have heard that we're building a Bill Monroe Museum? Thank you. We are. Hope to break ground on May 22nd. We've got the memorabilia that was purchased several years ago. It will have awards, records. We have two of Bill's cards. Items are being donated to me. And it will have films of some of Bill's friends. And there are opportunities for chamber members to help support this project. There's a flyer on your desk, on your table. Please take that with you and take a look at it. Not only is there just the Blue Moon walkway, but um, there'll be a theater in it. There'll be a blue, bluegrass boys' room, a mandolin display. Bill's home from Tennessee will be an entire section. And um, we're also going to be doing a statue of Bill outside. So any of these are opportunities that um, we are seeking funding for. The museum is being started with $300,000 from discretionary funds from the previous administration and uh, Governor Brashear, and that's what we're starting with, and we will be beginning as soon as those bids get returned. So why do people come here? They come here for lots of reasons, not only just the bluegrass and the heritage, but these are some of the other reasons. The Cowboy Fast Draw I mentioned. The, um, the Art Guild is really starting to do a lot of things. They're hosting events, just the Art Guild itself. And during the Strawberry Festival, they're going to be using the corner and doing an art show. They're doing the um, music night. They're, they're opening up to more and more things. The Dundee. We, we have people come and look just to go see that goat. They want to go see the goat. 
Then we have our, our antiques downtown, the deer hunting and the fishing. Several years ago, I think you might remember, we were in Field and Stream as one of the places to come for hunting. Our public library, with its genealogy program, um, you can ask Melissa, people come from other counties. This doesn't qualify for the tourists, but if they're here and they're working a long time, they're going to eat somewhere, and let's hope they need gas, and they put some money into our community. The um, museum over in Hartford, I don't have Fortsville Museum on here, but that's true. Sparks in the Park, that's a biggie. It starts, it's at the Beaver Dam Park. It's growing and growing, and people come from other areas to see that. The barn quilt, the quilts that are around town, that brings people in. And Hartford's Harvest Fest. But the Beaver Dam Amphitheater, I mentioned it earlier, and they are doing big, big, big things. You're, the, they have the summer concert series and so much more. You've got your farmer's market and the art council. And Jo Beth, is, I know she's going to do some awesome things there and just be working really hard to bring more and more things in. I think you've all heard, Charlie Daniels is the kickoff. They've got a Southern Gospel started, and that's already booked. It's featuring the Isaacs. Sparks in the Park will be here in July with a concert, and we're working on the Blue Moon Bluegrass Festival and many, many more. A new series are starting on Friday nights, and in uh, June, the 23rd kicks it off. So you got to admit, there's things to do in Kentucky. So what's coming up? This Friday, there's going to be a bluegrass. This is a fundraiser for the museum and the historical society in Fordsville. There will be those bands, plus I think there's some more pick to play. And this Thursday, another thing that started out here at the Senior Center, this is just a musician jam, basically. Judella started that out here. It's held at the Senior Center, and it's musicians just coming out here to play and pick. And if you just want to come out and hear music, it's a good time just to come out here and hear and listen, or bring your instrument and play. And I just thought about this. Judge Closures. <laughs> when I first moved to Kentucky, I really didn't like bluegrass that much. <laughs> so it kind of grows on you. And I thought about this in making this slide, and I really have a great appreciation for it. And knowing that Bill Monroe has been inducted to three Hall of Fames, he's in the bluegrass, he's in rock and roll, and he's in the Country and Western Hall of Fame. And when I heard Nora O'Donnell last year give credit to Elvis Presley for the Blue Moon of Kentucky, I wanted to dial right in and complain. <laughs> so it does grow on you. So I have decided if you haven't listened to bluegrass at least one night, you may not be able to call yourself an Ohio Ohioan. So we'll see you Friday night in Fordsville. Thank you. I'd like to make one statement if I, if I could. Uh, David Johnson, our judge, has been really hard working with county tourism. And I realize what Judge is talking about with our fiscal court, they're limited on their, on their funds. But I'm here to tell you, you showed some numbers there a while ago from the state, the $153,000 in taxes, that's low. That's way low. I know that for a fact, just from what we do. So that means that $139 per household is way low. So encourage, if you get your chance, you're all business people, you know how it works with the money and the, the taxes. Talk to your fiscal court, talk to your magistrates. David has been a great, done a great job for Ohio County and the tourism, he needs some help. We need to let our magistrates know that this is important, that this is huge for our county, and this is something we would like for all five of them to get behind. And, and it's not gonna happen if the people, the business people and the residents don't get up and and push it and try to help David make it happen. So thank you, David, for all you do, because I know it's not easy. But let's get him some help.